In this video, I'll be reviewing the brand new 100 megapixel Hasselblad X2D. I've tested the camera extensively on a beauty and fashion shoot, as well as a detailed product shoot, where I also made a side-by-side -side comparison to Hasselblad's flagship H6100 camera. And the results are shocking. We'll look at those results in detail, as well as discuss the many new features that Hasselblad bring to their new mirrorless medium format camera. So this is it, the brand new 100 megapixel Hasselblad X2D camera. And I'm going to tell you how the images that this camera produce are nothing short of astounding. But before we look at the results, let's give you an overview of the camera. So let's start off with the sensor. Let me just remove the lens. And what we have here is a 100 megapixel new back illuminated sensor. Now, as many of you know, the sensor is produced, manufactured by Sony, and it uses that back illuminated technology that gets more light directly to the photo sites. Now, Hasselblad have spent a huge amount of research and development time getting that sensor tuned to how they like color, especially with Hasselblad's natural color system. On top of that, they've really focused on noise reduction for higher ISOs and for longer exposures. So the sensor has been optimized for color, noise, and for using it across a broad range of exposure times. Now, if we move on for the um, sensor itself to the recorded images, we're now looking at 16-bit images, 16-bit raw files that we can bring in from this camera. And I'm just going to turn the camera on and bring that up on the back menu. Notice it's got a really fast startup time, this camera, compared to the previous model. I'm gonna go into quality here on the back, and here we can see bit depth. We can choose 14 or 16 bit, and we can choose raw, raw plus JPEG or JPEG, and I've been shooting with it just in raw. Now, the other huge improvement on this camera is the focusing system. Notice this new lens design. This is what they're calling, I guess, a sort of retro vintage look lens design. I'm gonna come back to the lenses shortly, but one thing I can tell you with these new lenses is that they are super fast in focusing and they are super silent. So if you compare them to the older X1, D2 lenses, uh, these lenses are still completely compatible with the X2D and they work really well, but the new focusing system is faster and silent on these new lenses. But we'll come back to the lenses shortly. So when we talk about the focusing, we have um, now uh, what they're using for the sensor is phase detect focusing. So the focusing is much, much more accurate, much, much more quick in operation. And it also means we have the ability to move the focus point around on the screen or choose where we want our focus zone to be. And in the future, Hasselblad are introducing a firmware update that is going to introduce face tracking or eye tracking so that we get even more performance from that focusing system. One of the amazing things I found using this camera on the fashion shoot especially was that focusing, the ability to just tap focus on the model's eye on the screen, and it was pin sharp. The results were absolutely pin sharp. We're going to look at those results shortly. Other features uh, of the camera, this is new to the camera, is the built-in image stabilization. They're using a seven-stop image stabilization. That means you're getting a seven f-stop 
improvement effectively in stabilization. And that is coming from a five axis uh, stabilization system on that sensor. Another fantastic feature for me is the internal solid state drive. We do have a memory card slot here and the camera takes the uh, CF Express cards and you can get a 512 gigabyte card, I believe, for uh, that camera. But the camera has a one terabyte, one terabyte solid state drive built into it. And that, for me, has been incredible because you can just pick the camera up, you can shoot with the camera, you don't have to worry whether or not you have a card in the camera. You've got super rapid transfer speeds to the solid state drive. You can just shoot away huge amount of storage space. But of course, if you're a wedding photographer or whatever type of photographer and you want that security of a backup or a mirrored system, you can insert a memory card or CF uh, Express card in there and you can mirror the shooting. So you can be capturing to the solid state drive and to the um, inserted memory card at the same time. So that's a real bonus or will be a real bonus for a lot of photographers. Another great thing uh, that I found as well for fashion and beauty images is that when I use the H6, it's a, a clunkier, slower camera to shoot with. We're only getting one frame per second maximum out of that when shooting continuously. But with the X2D, we're getting 3.3 frames per second. And I believe that they're even working on improving that frames per second speed, shooting speed as well. But it's already a nice introduction. Now, one of the big things that I was worried about with using a mirrorless camera compared to using a mirrored camera like my H6 was how it felt. How was I going to feel about shooting and looking through that viewfinder? Well, I can tell you I was pleasantly surprised. The viewfinder gives a full one times magnification. That means you're seeing the whole image that is captured. The image in the viewfinder is big. It's bright and it's pin sharp and it's really clear. The refresh rate seems really good on the screen. So to be honest, I didn't really feel um, or notice too much that I was shooting through an electronic viewfinder. It actually felt quite natural and I got used to it quite quickly. And that's after 30 years of shooting with uh, mirror cameras and obviously many years using the H system with a prism. Now, on top of that um, excellent electronic viewfinder, well, let me just tell you about that as well. They've improved the electronic viewfinder over the X1D2. The X1D2 had a three, let me just check my notes, 3.69 megapixel um, viewfinder. This now has an incredible 5.76 megapixel electronic viewfinder in there. Now, as well as the electronic viewfinder, we also have the screen here on the back, which is now tiltable. That wasn't tiltable on the previous camera. We can tilt that right out so you can do that sort of downward shooting if you want to look down at the back of the camera rather than shooting through it. And that screen is super sharp, super clear, really great to bring the images up on, double tap on the images to preview the images. And also again, just to move that focus point around um, as well as necessary. Uh, other great things with an electronic viewfinder that you obviously don't get with a mirror camera or a prism is exposure simulation. Now, this is a feature that I really quite like. It's not a lot of use to me in the studio, of course, because you don't want to use exposure simulation when you're shooting with flash because the light that you've got on in your studio is not the light that is taking the picture. It's the studio flash burst. So you can turn exposure simulation off. But if you're a street photographer or a natural light photographer and you want to see what the image is going to look like one stop underexposed or a little bit overexposed, then the exposure simulation provides that. You can see that through the viewfinder and it gives you a really good idea obviously of what's going to be captured. And actually when I'm shooting natural light shots on location, I often like to go a little bit underexposed, half a stop underexposed sometimes on a scene. Or if you're shooting in bright harsh light and you bring that sunlight 
right down on your model, you can simulate that exposure in camera and get a feel uh, for what it's going to look like. Now let's come back to the lenses. I promise you we're going to be looking at these incredible results shortly and we're going to be looking at the results of this camera against the H6 as well. We're going to see some surprises on that. Um, let's talk about these lenses again. So this is the new lens design um, from Hasselblad. This is a XCD 55mm lens. Let's talk about two things. First of all, we have a focus ring that pulls out. So in manual focus, we have the old traditional distance scale here, where you can position the focus based on distance, or we can use it in autofocus mode, or we can use it in focus assist so that we've got manual focus, but with an autofocus assist indicator. We also have the aperture ring here and you can notice on the top dial as I turn you can see the digital representation of the aperture numbers changing there as well but interestingly this aperture ring dial doesn't have to be used just for the aperture it can also be reprogrammed and reset to use for shutter speed. Uh, I think it can even be reprogrammed and reset to use for ISO. So you don't have to restrict yourself to using that wheel for aperture only. Feels really nice, really lovely smooth clicks on there. And I must say, I would really enjoy using it for the aperture control because it takes me back to the days when I was using more manual um, film cameras where the aperture uh, ring and control was on the lens. So that's a nice feature, but it's also a nice feature that it is reprogrammable. Now on top of that, as I said, these lenses are much, much faster at focusing. We can instantly focus. It refocuses superbly, quickly, straight away, locks onto the focus point. And you can obviously, as I said, move the focus point around, choose the focus point and focus. Silent focus. So again, that's a great feature compared to the previous lenses. Now, don't get me wrong, Hasselblad have been working to improve and always improve the quality of their lenses. And apparently these lenses deliver even more. There are three lenses in the lineup launch. There's the 55 millimeter that I've got on the camera now. There is also this new 38 millimeter lens as well. And there is a 90 millimeter lens uh, coming too at launch. So those three new lenses will be available from launch, I believe, but I'm sure there are going to be new lenses or this new lens design in the pipeline for future lenses. However, the current X1D or X1D2 lenses are all compatible and all work perfectly well with this camera. As a matter of fact, a lot of the shots that I took um, on the camera for my tests were using one of the existing uh, X1D2 lenses. Now, as well as the current lens lineup, if you're a H6 user like me and you're thinking, well, this sounds like a really great camera to work with, can I use my H lenses? Then yes, you can, because they do a H adapter. Not only do they do a H adapter, um, there is a um, indication that the H converter will actually improve the resolution of the H lenses. Now, I've not tested that myself, so I can't um, account for that. But on top of the H adapter, they also have an adapter for those X-Pan lens users and the V-System uh, camera users as well. So that's a really nice uh, bonus or benefit. I mean, that was available with the X1D, but of course, it's available now with the X2D as well. Now, another great thing with uh, some of these lenses is, as we know, with the Hasselblad medium format system, the shutter is a leaf shutter and it's actually in the lens. It's not in the camera body. And with a leaf shutter comes that huge benefit of any shutter sync speed with flash. So we're not restricted to a very limited 125th of a second sync speed. We can sync at 2,000th of a second. We can sync at 4,000th of a second on the new 90 millimeter lens. The new XCD 90 millimeter lens goes up to 4,000th of a second and the camera shutter can sync with flash at that speed. Now for me, that's a very important feature. I shoot fashion, 
on location, outdoors, in bright sunlight. And in those situations, I'm using high sync speeds to get the daylight down and underexposed so that I can introduce flash bursts into that underexposed daylight to bring my model and the fashion, the textiles to the correct exposure to reveal the model from the landscape in a different way. With those high flash sync speeds, it allows me to do that. So super, super um, glad and excited that that is actually even being improved on with this new four thousandth of a second on uh, the 90 millimeter lens. Let's talk about the battery. I'm just going to turn the camera off. The battery, nice and easy access, just pop that open, give it a little push and out it pops. The new battery gives you, uh, I believe around 420 shots battery life on one battery. The other interesting thing that I found uh, with the battery was just a surprise really. I was shooting tethered on a product shot with the camera and unlike my H6, where when I shoot tethered, the battery still drains and often on a full day's shoot, I have to replace the battery. And that's sometimes when you're on a, a shoot and the battery fails or, 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 or runs out of energy, uh, it may cause a crash in the shooting software. That doesn't happen with the X2D because the battery is being charged by the tethering cable while you're using it. So actually shooting tethered in the studio, my battery power was actually going up. It was increasing. So that was a bonus as well. Now I tested the camera, tethered shooting on a product shot and completely untethered for my fashion beauty shots. We're gonna take a look at some of those results now. Right, let's take a look at these incredible images. Now, uh, this shot, let me just go full screen here so you can see the image. That's one of the images I shot on my um, beauty shots. I ran this uh, theme of um, the model with handbags for my sort of beauty fashion shots. And then I used uh, the handbags for my product shot as well. So there was a link correlation between the two images. Let's take a look at the detail captured from this camera. So right now, um, I'm in at 200%. So let me just drop back to 100%. Um, you can see there, the detail is absolutely incredible. But if I go in further to 200%, we can still see amazing detail at 200%. We can go even more, 400%, no problem at all. Let's just drop back to 200% because I just wanna show you something here. Let's drop back to 100%. Um, you may have noticed that my file here says retouched and original because I have um, given this image a little bit of skin retouching. There, if I turn that off, is the original file. So you can see the hairs that I've removed, a little bit of cleanup on the skin. But I haven't done any sharpening to the image because I didn't need to do any sharpening. The image, in my opinion, could not get any sharper. And that's partly to do with the higher quality of these X-series lenses or these XC lenses compared to the older design of the H-System lenses. The back illuminated sensor as well is contributing, the new back illuminated sensor is contributing to this sharper image. So I'll just go back to my retouched version. So uh, not a huge amount been done there, but you can see that fantastic level of detail that has been captured using this new camera. So very, very excited about what that can do. Let's take a look at one of the other ones. Here's another one of the beauty shots that I captured. Um, this is our lovely model, uh, Katrina here, um, who's done a fantastic job. Look at the detail in that fabric. I mean, it is just sublime. Look at the detail, every little tiny hair, every little detail of the texture and the fabric the detail captured in that handbag, leather material, the eyes. And, and this was also achieved so easily by using the new touch focus um, positioning of the um, autofocus point. So I could be shooting through the camera like so, and then I could also have one finger on the screen to touch the back of the screen and move the focus point around. Now, of course, it is a little bit disappointing for me that the face tracking and eye tracking focus is not ready yet, but I've been told it is coming. 
It's a shame it's not there at launch, but it is good to hear that it is coming. However, if we look at these images, look how crystal sharp the results are and the amount of detail. I'm shooting at f11, or I was shooting at f11 on these shots, and those are the results I'm getting. Now, the other interesting thing is I've actually cropped uh, these images slightly. So we're actually, we have even more resolution than that. If I just go into the crop tool, you can see that there was actually more image out there and more image out here as well. So this is one of the beauties of shooting with a 100 megapixel sensor in such a compact camera like this is you're getting that 100 megapixel resolution, which means you can easily crop the image um, with, you know, hardly any real loss of effective resolution because you've got so much resolution to uh, start with. Let's go back, take a look at uh, one of the images again. Here's also another one uh, that was shot for the series, again, using the, the handbags. And then if we move over to the um, beauty shot, uh, sorry, not the beauty shot, to the product shot, we can see the incredible detail that I captured on my product shot with the two handbags. Now, let me just point out, the way that I shoot product shots, because we're talking about extreme levels of depth of field, is I often focus stack them. So this particular product shot was shot at f11 to get the sweet spot on the lens, and then I shot about seven images that were then focus stacked in Helicon and um, allowed me to deliver this image. But I am gonna show you some comparison images in a moment against the H6, just the straight shot out of the camera at f11 and f16 because one of the things i want to talk about that was really important to me to discover was where does diffraction come in where does it start to cause a problem so we'll come to that in a second but first let's take a look at this image look at the detail captured in this shot this is just sublime it's just incredible i was very surprised to see this amount of detail come out of this what is a relatively small camera you know especially if we pick up these two cameras you know we're considering using a h6 or using this more compact mirrorless camera there's a huge difference a big weight difference as well which also made shooting with this camera really nice for the beauty shots on a negative point for me um i did feel that my grip on the H6, maybe just because I'm used to it, felt a little bit more comfortable um, because of years of using that. The grip is comfortable on this X2D, but what I would like to maybe see in the future, and I don't know if it's possible, is just maybe a, a, a slight contouring in the bit that wraps around for the thumb to make that slightly more comfortable. But that might just be my hands. Someone with larger or smaller hands might find it different, or maybe I've just got to get used to holding it in a slightly different position. But one of the big benefits for me when using it for beauty and fashion shots was the fact that I could literally keep this thing in my hand all day because weight-wise, it was so much less than the H6. So let's look again here. There's the incredible level of detail that this camera has been able to capture. And this is my normal sort of work. It's product photography in a studio, with studio lighting tethered. So I was able to tether this camera with the uh, new USB C3 format cable into my computer, get beautiful big previews in the focus software, tethered shooting, and it worked a dream. Right, let's take a look at the menu system. So as before, actually, I'm just gonna close it down, turn it this way. As previously, you can just click, change your camera settings, whether you wanna change your aperture, or if you wanna change your shutter speed, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go into autofocus, manual focus, your color balance, whether you want uh, pre-programmed for flash there. Um, you've got your shooting mode. So I'm in manual shooting mode here. ISO, everything you need is all there um, for controlling the camera. A lot of the information is repeated on the top screen here, which is a new feature, nice, clear top screen as well. You can jump into ISO with that button 
or white balance with that button as well. And you can jump into shooting mode, manual, automatic, or aperture priority, shutter priority, and program or another full auto mode. I'm using the camera in full manual. We have a control wheel at the front and a control wheel at the back as well. Now again, you can use the touch screen on the back or you can use those control wheels. And then as I said, you can also use this new ring here that adjusts the aperture, but that can be reprogrammed, uh, configured to use for ISO or for shutter speed. So there's plenty of variation um, that can be used there as well. Now, with the electronic viewfinder, obviously you notice that I, uh, I'm of a certain age now that I need to wear glasses for looking at a screen and for close-up stuff. So this affects me when I'm looking through a camera. When I'm looking through a camera, even with a prism, you have a diopter on the prism that you need to adjust so that the picture becomes corrected for your vision or your current vision state. Now with an electronic viewfinder, I was concerned, well, how's that work? How are we gonna do that? But they actually have a diopter feature, an electronic diopter feature in the camera. Let's take a look at that. So if we go into display, we have um, the diopter. Also, while I'm on this menu, we can have the um, display for the rear screen in auto or rear screen only or EVF only. And that obviously senses when you're looking through the viewfinder or when you're not. So it chooses which screen to switch to because obviously the screen in there and the screen in here. Anyway, uh, the diopter. So what we need to do is we look through the camera and we're going to do that now. So you bring the camera up to your eyes and then you adjust the wheel at the front until the image inside becomes absolutely pin sharp for your eyes. And then that is the diopter adjusted to suit your eyes. Other features, the menu system, really easy to uh, navigate. So you can go into the stabilization. You can turn it off if you want. You can see it's automatically um, sensing which lens is going to be used. You've got the storage, shows you your solid state drive and how much um, of that storage space has been used from that one terabyte. Um, so it's, it's all there, everything that you need. Now, before we look at the comparison images with the H6 100 megapixel against this mirrorless X2D 100 megapixel, um, one other feature that I was a little bit disappointed wasn't there at launch is video. I would like to have 4K video in the camera that I'm using because it is a useful feature. And I hope it will be coming at some point in the future. Um, it's a shame that it's not there now. So let's look now at the comparison of the images against the H6. And let's also start to look at this issue of diffraction. Now, for those of you who don't understand diffraction, let me try and just give a very basic explanation. One of the things that product photographers uh, require is depth of field, because we want images to be sharp on the product, right from the foreground of the product to the back of the product. Now, this in certain situations is quite difficult to achieve. We can use, and we do use, tilt and shift lenses or tilt and shift adapters uh, to overcome that problem. But alternatively, you want to sometimes stop the lens down to f16 or f22 to maximize your depth of field. Now, the problem is, is that the lens sweet spot in most lenses is around middle aperture of f8, f11. That's where you get the absolute best quality out of the lens. Now, when you start to close the aperture down from f11 towards f16 for more depth of field, a problem occurs called diffraction. And this is that the light that's striking the, foco, uh, the photo sites is affected by the size of the hole of the aperture blades. And the actual image, rather than becoming sharper, although you gain depth of field, where the detail is actually becomes slightly softer. And this is a problem that occurs on the H6 at around f16, which means, generally speaking, I want to be shooting at f11 to f16 instead, 
F16 is still perfectly acceptable on the H6, but when you go beyond that F16, F22, you start to notice that image clarity isn't quite as good. And it's usually affected by sensors with smaller photo sites. And because this sensor is 100 megapixel, but it's slightly physically smaller than the uh, H6 sensor, my concern was that those photo sites being smaller were going to suffer diffraction earlier and result in a slightly softer image at F16 than I could get on the H6. However, I was pleasantly surprised. Because of the increased lens optical performance, because of the back illuminated sensor, whatever Hasselblad have done here means that they are delivering a better quality image at F16 and F22 on this sensor compared to the H6. Let's take a look at those results. So what I've got on, on screen are two separate focus software windows open. On the left is the images from the Hasselblad H6 100 megapixel camera. Remember, this has been the flagship camera of the Hasselblad lineup for some time. On the right, I've got the images from the X2D. Right now, I'm zoomed in to 100% on the H6 image. And you may be able to just see here, this was shot at 100 ISO F11. And you can see fantastic detail, fantastic clarity. But if we look here, this image was also shot at F11 on the X2D. And it's sharper. It's actually a higher quality reproduction than the H6 image. And the reasons for this are of course, we now have a 100 megapixel sensor on this camera. But additional to that, we have improved lens design. The lenses that are being used for the X2D feature or include a much uh, more recent optical design and optical quality. And whilst the H lenses have performed really well, and also the lens that I was using on this H camera was actually one of the more recent orange square uh, 100 millimeter lenses. Although these are very good lenses, they are an older design compared to the optical quality on these lenses. The back illuminated sensor is also having uh, an impact on this image quality that we're seeing, this improvement in image quality. So I'm already getting a slightly better image out of the X2D uh, than the H6, um, all in this more compact um, format. But the real surprise for me was when we looked at diffraction. And that's what happens when we start to get into F16 and F22. And then, of course, the uh, noise features. The noise with a back illuminated sensor is reduced. We'll come to that in a second. So we need to find the file for the Hasselblad at F16. So on screen now, we have the H6 image on the left shot at F16, and we have the X2D on the right shot at F16. And this is where I was surprised or pleasantly surprised. The image on the right has better clarity, better sharpness, and a reduction in diffraction problems that is starting to occur on the um, H6 at F16. So um, that is a big bonus for me, especially on product work, in that the um, new X2D is delivering a crisper, higher clarity result at F16, only slightly, but enough that it is noticeable. It then becomes more noticeable even as we move into F22, but I probably wouldn't want to use this camera F22 on product shots. I would restrict myself to F16 or F11 and use on the focus stacks. Let's take a look at noise. Okay, so on the noise, shot 412 was shot at 100 ISO. Well, we're gonna look in this shadow detail in this area here. This is at 100 ISO. Shot 431 was shot unbelievably at 
3,200 ISO. And whilst we can see some noise coming into that image, it's actually quite minimal. And we're in at 200% there on the image as well. Um, and that is very low noise for 3,200 ISO. So for potentially wedding photographers or street photographers in those low light, natural light situations, I don't know, maybe candlelight at uh, some wedding function, this would be a very, very good performing camera, especially with, with it, of course, being uh, medium format, 16-bit, and the beautiful tonal range that you get from that. You could be shooting at this ca on this camera 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, um, it, it wouldn't really matter. You would still get some great images even at those higher ISOs. So that's a, a really nice feature as well. So what we can take away uh, from these comparisons um, is that having reviewed the images and tested the images, this camera actually outperforms the H6 100. Now, interestingly, as a price comparison, I believe the X2D is going to come somewhere around eight and a half thousand dollars. Now, eight and a half thousand dollars with that level of image performance compared to around twenty seven thousand dollars for a H6. Well, you know, obviously there's a huge price difference when we've got a camera here that is delivering image quality that actually surpasses the H6. That was a big surprise for me. A pleasant surprise, but it does now mean, what do I do with this? Am I going to shoot on an X2D going forwards, a more compact, easier to handle camera, change my lens lineup, or maybe go with the H adapter to use some of my existing H lenses? Um, or do I invest in the new XCD lenses for this camera? Certainly, when it comes to fashion and beauty shots, this is definitely going to be my camera of choice because it's just so much more mobile, so much more easy to handle. And of course, with the auto focusing system and hopefully that future um, update with the eye tracking focus, this of course will be the perfect camera for those situations. And it's performed so well on the product shots too that it makes you wonder, well, what really would be the advantage of continuing with the H6 as opposed to this? I suppose the final advantages with the H system is the modularity that you can still take the sensor off and you can then use that sensor on a technical camera as well. So I haven't made my mind up yet on the system and what I'm going to do. Um, but I can tell you that I am going to be using uh, the X2D camera far, far more frequently uh, in the future because the image quality is what really matters to me. So in summary, this is one of the best cameras I've ever used. Minor things to do with the fact that the video isn't there, the eye tracking, uh, the focusing isn't there yet, and that the older lenses uh, would probably be a little bit noisy for uh, video mode, but the new lenses are completely silent. Other than that, everything I want in a camera is there. And ultimately, and most importantly, it's image quality. And this delivers on that. <laughs>